so I wanted to ease into the work tonight so I just did some of these some of these little jobs which I've wanted to do there was a mount over here which I've uh, removed took the drive shaft off so I could roll the thing forward and back nicely plus it's got to come off anyway took that piece of hand brake park brake off uh, took the carrier for the uh, spare tire off I think these two cross members these two channels can come off as well I don't think they offer any structural advantage whatsoever when I saw this one and it's all bent it's clearly not 45 uh, it's not 90 degrees to the frame here but it turns out that they're just bolted onto different holes I've noticed that I've got to take these big steels off here I'm not sure what they would have been used for but perhaps a towing bar right here let me just get the torch there's been a hole pulled out there so I may I may cut that out and weld a new piece in just to give that the strength back just for my own peace of mind before I paint it that's something I'll probably do I wanted to get these naggy little jobs done first before I start because when I'm doing things like that that rear corner and the front cowl and all the welding and all that stuff I always say to myself well at the end of the evening I'm going to take some of these pieces off and I never really get around to doing it so uh, that's what I've been doing today before I get started I, a couple of things I've got to work on these things the handbrake cables I'm going to use this well I'm planning to use this same method for the for the handbrake I think it would have had a couple of cables from there to like a signal box type lever in the front I'm wanting to go to a foot pedal operated thing or an electric actuated handbrake um, whether I uh, I haven't 100% decided on that yet but if I do then I'm gonna to have to free this cable off or replace it or whatever so that's the thing I'm sticking with using this axle to start with I think it's going to be pretty low ratio um, and with the TH400 transmission I think top end speed's going to be a bit of a thing I don't intend to go fast in this it's not like the whole point of this truck I'm not lowering it or making it go 100 miles an hour it's like mm, don't kind of want to do that so I'm sticking with it I'm going to see how it is I'm, I'll likely change the rear axle out pretty soon but in the first instance I'm having a new drive shaft and uh, well two drive shafts actually prop shafts made so I need to measure up for that so that's happening I mean but this is a pretty I mean it's a three-quarter ton truck it's going to be a strong differential and axle there is a fair bit of there is a fair bit of uh, what's the word slop backlash whatever I don't know I'm not really that experienced with these things to know but that feels like probably not a good idea to really snatch on that to start with it might be that I just change the the gear set in there around a little bit or replace it just repair it you know open it up see what it looks like I'm definitely going to change the oil in it before I do anything else well before I run it but I've got I've got some extra time this week to work on the truck so uh, next thing to do is clear out the interior and do some sheet metal work on that I think
I'm going to brace, I'm going to put a cross brace in here first, both sides, and I'm going to put a cross brace that way as well. Um, All tooled up, got everything sorted, and the welder runs out of gas, and I don't have any more. So that's minty, isn't it? I don't know why I didn't think to use the stick welder before. Maybe it's because I only had six inches of stick to do what I did. I managed to get some tacks on there. So when I cut this center piece out, the cab shouldn't go waffle shaped. Shape is a waffle. Uh, rectangular. Taco shaped. Yeah, hopefully it won't go taco shaped. <laughs> So that's the uh, seat apron taken out with a section of the floor. I wanted to get that out so that I could accurately measure the floor because I'm actually going to be um, having that laser cut and folded accurately. It's not a particularly difficult thing to, to make if you've got the tools but I don't have a guillotine, a press brake or a laser cutter. Not that you need a laser cutter, but, you know, it's the best way for me to go ahead and get that done. So, yeah, I guess I'm going to have a little bit of a break from working on this until I've got some pieces in. So this is the floor which I've drawn. I've uh, put a load of holes in the sides for the plug welds. I've gone for quite a thick material on this one. Most people would probably go with 1.2 or 1.5, I've gone with 2 mil, just because I want it to be quite strong. Um, I'm not too fussed about the weight, it's a pretty heavy truck anyway, but this is going to be nice and rigid, and plus I'm going to put a framework underneath it as well, so it's a pretty cool process. It's not particularly difficult to make this type of thing by hand, if you've got a guillotine and 
a folding machine, uh, you know, a press brake and all that type of thing. But in terms of expense, it's not so bad either. I mean, it's it's all about for me. It's all about time and having the materials, having the space, having the the tooling. This is a really good way of going about it. But what you can't do with this is build a piece and try it, then add a piece and try that again. But what I do with these things is hopefully get a really good starting point. And if I need to adjust it, trim a little piece off here and there, then I can do that too. And here it is. Got all the weld, got all the weld plugs uh, cut in it. I've gone for a pretty heavy uh, two millimeter gauge steel on this. It's just one big piece, and it's kind of one of the cornerstones of the project. I really wanted not to have a hump where the uh, where the transmission is. So I really didn't want a hump there and I've positioned everything so that it doesn't need that, which I'm quite happy about. Um, so yeah, I've got a bunch of cutting out to do. Obviously I'm not going to get that floor in with these braces here. The plan is to put a box section frame underneath the whole thing. But I think whilst I've got these braces in, it's time to cut these pieces out. And uh, that's... Uh, going to take a lot less time for you to watch than it's going to take for me to do it, so enjoy!
So I think uh, it's pretty self-evident what I've got in mind. I've cut these little slots out so that the steel box section is going to be the correct height for the for the floor when it goes in. I don't really want there to be a gap. Um, I've just put some weld through primer on there um, just to give it the best chance possible. Uh, you know, I think uh, you're never going to get all, you know working like this, even shop blasting. I don't think you're going to get all of the all of the rust out of these trucks but I'm trying to give it the best chance I can so the idea is I'm going to have these two sections going across um, I don't think I've got enough steel to do what I want to do with the rest of it at the moment I want to put like maybe one two three four pieces across um, and then uh, mainly for the structure for the seats to be honest and then I'll run some little tacks underneath. But once I've got these cross members in, the strength what has been lost by removing the floor is going to be there so I can take these bracings out and uh, start tackling removal of these pieces. I think I'm going to have to rig something up to make the... Uh, stop the cab from falling because the the way the cab mounts are they're mounted onto this sill and I don't think it's going to drop but it does rely on the floor as well and it's quite rusty so I think I might put some axle stands underneath the, the uh, cowls perhaps don't know yet, figure it out progress is good Time for a coffee. So that's that bracing out. I'm not 100% convinced it was really required. I wonder whether it's more appropriate when the cab is off the frame. I don't know. But it was reassuring that when I cut through there, there wasn't this huge ping in the thing move around and whatnot. But there's quite a lot of structure still left in there, like here, and there's none there. Um, this hasn't buckled or warped. I haven't actually got the hinges here in order to test fit the doors again, uh, but I feel confident. I hope I'm not foreshadowing a couple of months down the line when I go to put them back on. Anyway, got these pieces in here. Uh, yeah, so I am gonna put like a ladder frame across there, probably four pieces. Um, I'm going to get the seats, I've got some Volvo XC90 mid-row seats I'm planning on using because I really wanted a centre seat belt and they come with an integrated seat belt on the outside. Actually all three seats slide back and forth independently, which is very rare for a mid-row. A lot of them aren't like that. Anyway, I can now tackle the front part of the floor. Next stage, cut these front pieces out. So I'm going to try the flooring. I couldn't wait. I'm not going to take all these bits out first. They'll sit on top of it. Um, I want to see if that floor is going to work. I'm a little bit anxious about it. So fingers crossed it's all right. Otherwise, I guess it's either going to need adjusting or... I don't know, making into a bench.
is actually not that bad. I've got some sort of gappage on the other side, like, well, this is not even straight here, so I think that will uh, finesse in a little bit. Of course, it won't go down all the way at the front because of these pieces. I think you need to trim off probably half an inch maybe off the front just to make it work in nicely. Just come halfway down that hole there. I mean, it's laser straight of course, so I think once that's done and the floor's all taken out and removed, I think it's going to be pretty pretty damn good. I'm really happy with it. So that's the uh, floor trimmed a bit. It's uh, looking good. Sitting flat mostly. That little hump in the middle is uh, stopping it. I need to flatten that out. And even the little, even the contours at the edge here are looking quite good. Maybe it needs just the smallest shiver, sliver, shiver of a sliver. Maybe it just needs the smallest amount taken off there. But other than that, I'm thinking that looks really good. I can't start welding it in until I've uh, rust proofed underneath and stuff like that. 
That's a really important step. I might remake the piece which I've got in there for there. And that bit there. We'll see how the piece I've got fits. So with it in, not welded or anything, there's barely any deflection at all, even with all my weight on it. Just needs that little bit more finessing and it's done. These bits will pull in nicely. Basically make the door open in straight. I think I'll bring the hinges back next time and fit the doors before I weld it all in. That would be a bit of a disaster if they wouldn't fit. To think I was gonna patch up that other floor So I got the uh, framework fully welded into the uh, into the body there. And it's got a little bit more grinding to do over there before I finish. Just gonna slot the floor back in. A little bit more fettling required with the floor. That'll be next time's uh, job, I think. I think I need to get the return, the bend. I need to tweak it a little bit. And it needs to go forward ways that way about half an inch something like that that's all and join it into here somewhere around here as always wanted to get more done got plenty done but you know till next time i hope you enjoyed it let me know what you think Hello. What do you think about it, huh? What do you think? Do you like it? Do you like it? <laughs>